Here's a solution to the 2014 conservation momentum question. That was question one. If you want to skip to any part, just click on that part of the question. If you can't remember, this question is kind of like a space hug. It's one body comes, hits another body that's at rest, and the two drift off romantically together. Of course, because we can't afford a space program, you probably just use blocks of wood like this or something on an air track. And the conservation momentum just says the total momentum before, so that's the one moving and the one stopped, is the same as the momentum after. Any conservation is before equals after. We start off by drawing a label diagram of the two. You put body A and body B on an air track or um, a rolling hill, something to reduce the friction. Um, you need a timer, an emotion sensor, something that recorded the time and the distance so that you can work out the speed. You can use a ticker tape timer or whatever you used as long as it records um, motion in some way. Um, you label a means of attaching the two together. That's so when the two bodies come together, they don't bounce off and fly off. You can use magnets, you can use blue tack, a bit of clay, a bit of chewing gum from under the desk. That's probably not, don't write down chewing gum, the leaving sirs. No, nah, no, don't, don't. <laughs> State what measurements a student took and how these measurements were used to calculate the velocity. You measure the mass with a mass balance. You don't use a weighing scales. No, that will give you the weight in newtons. You're looking for kilograms here. You also need the time for the amount of gaps and the length for the amount of gaps because a time and a distance will give you a velocity. You know that from that silly triangle. Okay, let me explain this bit in more detail. Um, card comes in it breaks the light signal the clock starts then as it continues through all the time we're recording the time until it's clear of the gates we stop the clock that gives us a time during which the card was traveling through and then of course the distance is just um the length of the card so you get your time you get your distance you use speed equals distance over time that's how you work out a speed um, we really should say velocity because it's speed in a direction so the next part we work out the conservation of momentum in this case it can be a bit confusing because there's a lot of variables that's a big dirty equation if ever i saw one it's not that bad actually it's not complicated it's just mv the equation for momentum just four times in a row. Uh, they do a mathy thing where we combine the masses because the two of them are kind of jammed together. That's why we say m plus m at the right hand side of the equation. So here's what you do. You write down your equation. We start with the left hand side here. We've substituted in the values, the mass of body A, the velocity of body A plus the mass of body B, the velocity of body B now is zero because it's stopped. We like that because things pop out of the equation and when you multiply them by zero, they become zero. So when we multiply all that out, you get 0.273 kilogram meters per second. That's a big long unit. It's actually not bad either. Don't learn it off. Just learn off the formula for momentum, which is MV, mass kilograms, V velocity meters per second. So just kind of mash them together. And that's equal to what's well, on the right hand side here. That doesn't really matter because you've just got the three marks by writing this down. Then for the next part, we're going to work out the right hand side of the equation here. You've got your mass of body A, the mass of body B. You add those together and you multiply them by the velocity of both of them together, which is 0.41 meters per second. Now, you should get something like on the left hand side here. So this red bit here will get you your three marks. But for the next bit, they say, um, how does this make it uh, a conservation? Conservation is before equals after. You can see before it's 0 0.273, after it's 0 0.277, which is sort of, you know, the same. Okay, it's, it's within um, experimental error. So there are, are little things that affect the experiment um, 
such the slope might not be exactly right. There's friction, air resistance, etc., etc. So, but that's within reasonable values. For the next bit, the student was trying to make sure there was no other forces, external forces, acting on those bodies A and B. What are the two forces that a student needs to take into account of to ensure this? So there's two forces we're looking for, and later how they reduce those effects. Well, let's start off. Well, the first force is weight acting downwards, as it always does. Try not to say gravity here, it's weight. Weight is the force. Gravity might be interpreted as baby G, that G for acceleration. Friction is the second one we've got to look after. It's acting against the motion. So if this is moving right, friction law is moving left. Okay, so weight and friction will get you four marks each. And then to reduce the effects, you want to put the whole thing on a cushion of air and that should push it up. There's a few things you could write down to reduce these forces. That's one of them. Um, you could also have a bit of lubrication on those wheels, a bit of oil, a bit of three in one. You could polish the runway. That's strangely an acceptable answer. So Mr. Sheen, get it out. You can also have a little slope here. I've drawn that in some of my diagrams and that's to kind of cancel out that friction force. So it should be just on the edge of slipping down. And that's the whole question. There's the marking scheme of everything we've done if you want to flick back uh, for a quick reference.